My last two years living in Melbourne City were some of the hardest years I'd faced, as you may have seen in the last video. Honestly, I felt like I'd experienced more mental struggles within the past two years than in the last ten before. I also found that the city I called home was quite a lonely place to be a content creator, as this city didn't really have much of a creative culture at all. So I decided to leave Melbourne and see what life could be like in Bali, a place that had that culture and was full of content creators just like myself. Whilst I was planning my Bali escape, a friend I met in Iceland years ago invited me on a once in a lifetime trip to Raja Ampat, one of the most beautiful untouched paradises on earth. And after all the hardship I'd experienced in the last few years, I decided it would be the perfect way to feel alive again. So I packed all my things and right before I left to see what it was like to live in Bali, I set off in what would soon become one of the greatest two weeks of my existence, embracing life in Raja Ampat. Will we always stay this way, wrapped up in the summer day? Try to find a piece of time that lets me freeze you in my mind. I, I don't want us to change, don't want us to chip away. Oh, I am trying to save our bodies against the waves. Could we stay in here? Today was the day I was arriving on Waisai Island to meet the group. Well, it was meant to be, but unfortunately I'd missed my flights. I was so busy making the last video, I'd forgotten what day it was, and now I was going to be arriving three days late. Within those three days, Annika and Aurora had already started to explore Raja Ampat and were learning how to free dive deep below the ocean surface. Annika also acquired her open water diver certification, which in a place like this, that's something you would want to have. I wasn't the only one having flight problems, however. Annika's friend Zane was also stuck at Jakarta Airport, so Zane and I caught the same flight over together to meet the others. I'm only gonna see one of my friends I haven't seen in so long. Hello? Hey! How are you going? Oh, so hey, Annika. You know. Oh, it's, it's only been like two years or something. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you finally. Yes. Now that we were Hi. all finally together, <laughs> the next morning we would be doing our first scuba dive within the most biologically diverse waters on the planet. Fortunately, years ago in Thailand, I also completed my open water diver certificate on Koh Tao Island with Mojo Divers, so I was all ready to go. All geared up in oxygen tanks full, we were about to enter another world beyond our understanding. Once we dove down and reached the bottom, the ocean floor came to life. All around us, there were multiple species of fish to find. From angelfish, and butterflyfish, to triggerfish, and the barracuda. Ah, and this friendly little guy. I'm not really sure what he was. Then I found my favourite fish I never thought I would ever see. The lionfish, named for its venomous barbs that form what looks like a lion's mane. This find got me so hyped. Also joining us in Raja Ampat was Annika's father Sandeep and Zane's mother Tracy, both experienced divers. Just when we thought we'd seen everything, one of our dive instructors signalled something big in the distance. So we went over to investigate. It was a tasseled wobbegong shark, a shark I never even knew existed. And this was the most insane find on the dive so far. Zane and I were absolutely shocked. It was our first dive and we'd seen more than we'd ever imagined. Oh, we just had our first dive, it was mad. Oh, it was <laughs> so cool, first time I've used the underwater camera. 
under uh, doing a dive, so look the sand shark. Sand, sand deep seemed to find everything. <laughs> So I'm going to follow him next time I dive, he's the fish magnet. Each day we had two dives to complete, and to break up each dive, we went island hopping around the many unique islands that made up Raja Ampat. We had one more dive left to complete today, and this one we were all super excited about. It was a dive location called Turtle City, and by the name, I'm guessing you can tell what we were about to experience. Raja Ampat is a diver's paradise and has many beautiful dive sites, each with its own unique marine life and topography. Different seasons bring in different creatures, and each site has its different currents and visibility depending on the time of day and weather conditions. It's rare that you will experience the same dive site again as identically as you did before. Once again, the ocean was tearing at the seams with fish and other marine life. Whilst we were searching for sea turtles, Aurora was practicing her free diving, getting a more natural free experience of the underwater city with one long breath hold. We were now over halfway into the dive, but there were still no turtles to be seen. Then, at the edge of our visibility, a faint shadow of a creature approached us. A green sea turtle. Within minutes, we were surrounded by green sea turtles. A surreal moment for all of us. The turtles eventually decided it was time to nap, and it was also time for us to surface. Today did not feel like real life. I'd only been in Raja Ampat for one day, and already I felt like I'd lived more than in a month back home. And the day was still not over. We were now heading towards an isolated island for sunset, but there was a surprise on this island that none of us could expect. Home to the island were a bunch of friendly cats. A dream come true for many of us, I am sure. So we had a little incident on one of our dives. Unfortunately, Attica has broken her camera. Uh, the screen has been hit by something and now the screen no longer works at all. We can't even use the viewfinder because the settings are set to the screen only, so we need the screen to change the settings. But luckily, her dad has come up with an idea. See you, Mr. Sandeep. Good luck. <laughs> Mr. Sandeep decided to catch the ferry as we were off on another dive and fly to a neighbouring island called Makassar, where there was an electronics store that could fix Anika's camera or find a new one. Mr. Sandeep was able to get a new Sony a7 III and bring it back to Waisai Island two days later so Annika could continue capturing content on her journey here. I think Mr. Sandeep wins Father of the Year for that one. That is unbelievable. Annika now had a new camera to capture the rest of her adventure and just in time too because this next week would be so full of adventure and dreamlike experiences. And little did I know that these next few days would form some of the best memories of my life. Being completely immersed in this incredible nature, I'd almost forgotten about everything that was troubling me in my last two years. I guess I was now appreciating the fact that we are so lucky to even be a part of this beautiful world and experience it. And in these moments, that was all that really mattered. As blissful as it was, our non-stop adventuring came at a cost. 
Because we were experiencing so much in a short amount of time, it meant that our bodies didn't really get a chance to heal up from any injuries. And in Aurora's case, her slightly oversized freediving fins were leaving her with some nasty abrasions above her heels where the fins were rubbing. Here's the injuries. Give us a look. And in this humid environment, oh. it had to be taken seriously to avoid infection. We're all hurting ourselves. <laughs> this meant that Aurora would have to stop freediving. However, Aurora wasn't the only one of us to get injured. The next injury would take place on this beautiful island we went to for sunset after a dive. An island where there was only us and a tree covered in butterflies. A place that seemed way too perfect to be real. What did you do, Zane? Kicked the rock. Nasty. Took off a toenail. You're kidding. As the sun was setting, Zane accidentally smacked his toe on some volcanic rock protruding from the sand. His toenail was hanging by a thread. This meant that Zane may no longer be able to dive. Both Aurora and Zane might now have to miss out on Melissa's garden, the most beautiful dive site in Raja Ampat, and one nobody wanted to go home without seeing. Given the injuries, we decided to take a break from diving and do something a little different. Right, it's 5.50 a.m. We've hiked out here into the middle of the jungle uh, to do some bird watching. <laughs> Got all the guys here. In the middle of the tropical rainforest, we waited patiently to hopefully see some unique birds of paradise. Then, in a nearby tree, one appeared. A rare bird called the greater bird of paradise. One of the most unique birds on earth. And it was here that we decided to call our group the Birds of Paradise. As the sun rose, we hiked back through the jungle, avoiding many spiders along the way to get to our next exciting adventure of the day, the Blue Lagoon. Craziest trip so far, so we... I really loved when we, like, you know, we woke up real early, hiked to that jungle and saw the bird of paradise. Getting to hike to a jungle is always sick. Yeah, we were hiking in the jungle. Like it was like we were in the, the middle dark. of nowhere. It was in the dark. You guys started too. walking and I thought you were going just like straight into the bushes, but there was a path that was apparently there. I don't think I it was know. a path there. He was just made. He was gonna have yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just cutting all the branches for us so we can get through. I asked, that, that was cool. I asked Duan about it. He said that we probably passed quite a few like big snakes while we were on that walk. And we just really? Oh, yeah, he said that. Nice he said that. We oh wow! Well. <laughs> yeah, good thing you guys didn't know about that. At least one or two big ones. Yeah. Our journey through Raja Ampat was almost over, but there was still one last dive to complete: oh, yeah. Melissa's Garden, a dive site most people could only dream of experiencing. But with some injuries still not healed, Aurora sadly may have to stay on the boat. Luckily, Zane was able to tape up his toe and was okay to dive. And just like that, we were in. Immediately, it was clear why this was one of the most famous dive sites in the world. Melissa's garden is known for the many different species of colorful tiny fish that illuminate the coral floor. At one point, I spotted these two fish. And if you look really closely, the one on the left changes color. This absolutely blew my mind. I didn't know fish could do that. All of a sudden, Aurora joined us in the garden. Despite her injuries, she decided to brave out the pain, as this was indeed a once in a lifetime opportunity that would be so sad to miss. And with Annika's new camera, she was able to get some incredible photos free diving within the colorful garden, making her experience so worth it. This last dive was one of the most unbelievable experiences of my life. Being someone who has traveled all over the world, I thought I'd seen most of what nature had to offer. But diving in Raja Ampat completely flipped what I knew, reminding me that no matter how much you experience in this life, our world is so intricate and diverse that it will always provide a blissful surprise for you the longer you look and the further you go. 
In Raja Ampat, I was able to truly understand the power of nature and how just by surrounding yourself within the new and exciting parts of it can greatly remedy our stresses and traumas. I guess that would explain why I was feeling the best I'd felt in a long time. An important lesson I would take with me. So today is probably one of the saddest days at Raja Ampat. It's the day that we all have to say our goodbyes to each other after everything we've done and all the memories we've created. The saddest part about traveling is sometimes saying goodbye, but the sadder the goodbyes means the greater the memories were that we created with each other. Just fixing their injuries. <laughs> Again, really soon. Even though this adventure had come to an end, for me, a new journey was about to begin. I was now on my way to see what it was like to live in Bali, a paradise home to many other nomads and creators. But would it be a place that I could call home? I had no idea, but I was about to find out. 